Von. And that. Dr. Rennick, aren't you? Yes. Would you come quickly, Doctor? There's a lady been taken ill. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brody. Oh, just once more, Al. Oh, thanks, I'm not as young as I used to be. Well, the dance seems a great success, Brody. Aye, aye, to the fine gather. Ah, Brody. I've been wanting to have a talk with you the whole evening. Oh, other pal. I was wondering. Are you quite sure you don't want to take those premises of mine? Did I not make myself clean the day you sat in your backside at my office? Because if you did want to buy the shop, you can't have it. Because I've sold it. To the Mongo Hat Company. <laughs> you could have sold it to old Nick for all I care. I thought you'd like to hear the news. That's why I hurried here the moment I arrived from Glasgow. You think that you harmed me. You, me. <laughs> On the contrary, you've done me a great favour. I shall be glad to get rid of the likes of you and your cheap customers. Mm -hmm. But the big people of Levon... They'll come to me as they have done for the last 20 years. Am I disturbing you? Not at all. I should like to have a word with you in private, Brody. <laughs> Lady Winton told you about our wee chat. She did. Actually, I have heard it said before that you claim to be related to us. Aye. It's true, we share the same name. But you can take it from me, that is as far as it goes. Why? Well, you mean to say... Everything else is pure imagination. But Lord Winton, that's impossible. Why, the whole of Leavenford taken for granted that you and I are related. Then, my dear fellow, why not simply put the rumour to rest? After all, it's not essential to belong to the peerage, is it? What was the Earl saying to you all that time? Nothing in particular. Nothing that would be of any interest to you. Just the sort of thing that the relations would say to one another. Mr. Brody. Some people seem to have the hide of an elephant. You throw them out of one door and they come creeping back through the other. You dear. If this was not a ball with ladies present, Stop I... this. I'm speaking to you as a medical man. Dr. Laurie is my physician. So much the better. It saves me listening to your insolence any longer. This is Brody's fainted. I've taken her into one of the anterooms where she can get some air. And what do you charge for that? Will you try to explain to Mr. Brody that his wife must be taken home at once? This isn't just an accidental state of weakness. I've examined Mrs. Brody. Well, I know her state. She happens to be my patient. And yet you've And what is wrong with my wife, may I ask? Cancer. Advanced incurable cancer. That is a lie. There's the sword between us. This marks the borderline. Oh. No, Dennis, I'm me. Don't forget I'm a counter jumper. I might be a sword jumper as well. <laughs> oh, I do feel so queer. Did you put something funny in the champagne? Yes, the bubbles. It took me hours. Every single little bubble put in by hand. Oh, gently. Don't you think I deserve just a little reward for that? No. But I'm not going to budge from here until I get that kiss, and I'm sitting very comfortably. Listen, Father. 
father's coming. Oh, no, you don't catch me like that a second time. <laughs> It's all right, don't lose your head. Now give me that. Get my hat off the hat stand. Huh? No, not in the kitchen. This carrying on behind my back is to stop. Is that clear? Are you not ashamed, you, a daughter of mine, to play about with that mealy-mouthed young pup? Who calls himself a doctor? You have to stay in the house. Not a step beyond the front gate. He didn't see me. Good morning, Doctor. Mother's upstairs. She's staying in bed today. I've come to see you, Miss Brody. Is it true that it was because of me that you weren't allowed to go to the ball? Well, in a way. Then I owe you an apology. I am most truly sorry to have spoiled your evening's pleasure. Now, I've no idea at all what my crime was. You didn't mention anything to me the other day in the show. When you... When you laughed at me because of those gloves. Oh, I didn't laugh at you. It was just that you made such a funny face when the scene was passed all of a sudden. I know, I know. I, I do cut a funny figure when I try to look smart. Well, I just came to apologize, so... Dr. Rennick. I... I only wanted to thank you for all you've done for Mother. Angus told me how kind you were to her in spite of everything. And I... Any other doctor would have done the same thing. You're not an easy man to talk to, Dr. Rennick. Whenever one says anything nice to you, you retire into your shell. Do I? I know whenever I want to say anything nice to somebody, I can never get it out. Well, that's all I wanted to say. Goodbye, Miss Brody. Goodbye, Dr. Rennick. No, that's not all. Listen, Mary. I know what sort of a life you've been leading here in your father's house. 
i can't bear to see you unhappy